forth this word. Amen. Father God, we just thank you. We give you the praise, Lord God. Father God, I ask you to increase this. I decrease, oh God. God, I ask you to anoint me this, this morning, Father God. Oh God, let me speak the truth there, Lord God. Let the people see you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, not to weep, but you, God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. God. In the name of Jesus, open up their hearts, oh God, that they're able to receive this word, Lord God. Enlighten their understanding, Lord God, of your word, Lord God. And we give you the praise and we give you the the glory. In the name of Jesus, Father, we lift up the pastor of this house, oh God. We ask you to strengthen our pastor, God. We ask you to meet every need in this life, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, every plot and plan of the enemy against our pastor, we cancel it out right now by the blood of Jesus. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Y'all can turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel 15. Two verses, 22 and 23. This is the main thought. This is, where, this is what we're going to deal with. We're going to deal with rebellion this morning. Amen? Amen? I've been tossing with this word for a couple of weeks. I'm saying, Lord God, a couple of days. And so I was like, Lord, I don't know what to say. I don't know what you're saying. What am I saying? He said, you got 66 books. Open up your mouth, and I'll do the speaking. And he gave me the word about rebellion. And for those that are coming to Bible school, those are not coming out, I, I encourage you to come. We're pastors doing a series on God's way. And in order for us to do things God's way, we got to get out of the way. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. But I come to help you this morning because I had to help myself, you know. Because see, the first thing that we do, y'all, the ones that have to bring this, we are the first partake of this word. We the one that's got to, uh, uh, got to chew this word as well. And it didn't, I, I thought, you know, hey, I'm doing it, what I can do. God said, no, you're not. But see, when you have that relationship, like we talked about, it's when you have that relationship with your father, he'll talk to you. You've got to know the voice of God. you got to know the voice of God. If y'all got to say amen, so I can read it. Amen. And the next one that y'all need to get that I'm going to read is 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 6. So you need to hold that spot as well. Okay? But the main thought is right here. It is Samuel's doing the talking to Saul. And we're going we're gonna to get into that a little bit about Saul. But I want you to hear this now. Hear what the word of the Lord is saying. And Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience, obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than for the fat of the rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity, and Adultery, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He had also rejected thee from being king. Amen. Turn over <coughs> to Second Corinthians. I'm getting there. Second Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 6. It said, for the weapon of our warfare are not calm, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captives every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Did y'all hear what God said? He welcomed, he want you to obey him. When you disobey God, when you want to do things your way, uh, you get in trouble. And some of it is more than you bear than you can really want to, than we can handle. 
My Bible tells me that the ways of a transgressor is hard. Yeah. So when you resist God and you fuck up against Him, my God, my God, mm -hmm. that's a bad place to want to be, especially to the one that loves you. Amen. And I mean, He just loves us. Y'all know that He just loves us. No matter what we do, He ain't pleased, but He loves us. He do. He really do love us. He really do love us. But in these two scriptures, there is so much information and revelation is packed. First, we're going to see God's heart of obedience behind both rebellion and stubbornness. How God viewed them from a, uh, how he viewed very real, how he reviewed, excuse me, y'all, the devil is like, how he reviewed our disobedience, y'all. And then the consequences, the real consequences of disobedience by not um, doing what God has told us to do. Things we go through, because the, a lot of times we think we're going through, oh, I'm going through for the kingdom. A lot of times you're not going through for the kingdom. You're going through because you don't mess up. That's right. A lot of things that we go through, we put it on. Well, I must be, no, 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 no. You have some way down the line resisted the word of God in your life. How do you know? Well, you can look at your own life. Uh, well, God seems like every time I look around, uh, I'm just always broke. Uh, what are you doing? Am I paying my tithes? Well, I pay them sometimes. And I know we get tired of hearing about money, but I want to make it simple where you can understand it, because this is one of the areas that the enemy do fight us in. That's right, that's right. So, when God said pay our tithes, pay the tenth, he only, he only asked for ten, ten cents out every dollar. He mean exactly that. It does not excuse me, Mother Adam, from paying my tithes while you pay your tithes. It don't work like that. God, When God set this order right here, he, it applies to all of us that are in Christ Jesus. That's right. Amen? He applied to all of us. So a lot of things that we go through, we go through because we choose to pick those things. Even in our relationship with men, with women, even with the friends that we hang around with. Come on here now. And we choose, and God said, no, they're not for you. But we say, yeah, I got to have them. I got to have her. Oh, they're good friends. That's my home in town. You know, they got my back. God said, they're not for you. But we override God. And then, when we override, then guess what? When they're going to stab us in the back and we get all upset. Uh, we want to do something. We want to fight. We want to retaliate. But if we want to just hop into the voice of, of the Lord, it would have saved you a lot of heartache and pain. Come on, come on. Amen? So it's important that we got to have an ear. You say you got to have an ear to hear what God is saying. He said, my sheep know my voice and another, they won't answer. But a lot of times, because the enemy is so crafty, and because he waits, one thing I told you before, he don't mind waiting for you. He don't mind waiting. So he'll wait for the opportunity to show his head up in your life. Come on. Then you, he'll whisper these things to you, then you'll move away from the word of God. We'll move away. When you look at Samson, it's a good example. Delilah, if he really had did his homework, would have cost him, cost him his life, cost him his blessing, cost him his anointing. It cost him even his life. Come on here. And so we sit here, if you do the background on her, she was, she loved money. You know, y'all men know no women that love the money, love that money. Y'all call us gold dick, call them gold diggers. I used to be like that. I'm being real. I used to want that money too. But if he did his homework, see, one thing about it, we get caught up, and, and I'm going to keep this real X-rated, I'm not X-rated, I'm keeping it PG because of the children, but because we get caught up with the sexual part, you know what I'm talking about. And so when we get caught up with the sex and, and, and you so into them and they, you know they ain't no good because when they start pulling on you, that's already a sign that joke going to fight you. Yeah. Come on here. You are, uh, every time you go somewhere, every time you can't kiss the back of her hand because you always see the pop. That was a sign. Ooh. But we so caught up uh, with what we see. And so we get you know, to override what God had already spoken over your life. And let me insert a thank you, Holy Ghost. See, you know what keep you? The word keep you. God don't care nothing about 
your flesh and blood. The word keeps you. I watch over the word I have over your mind. Amen. Amen. Disobedient. You know, if you're not working, you need to be in church. Come on, can I know that? Yeah. Can I know that? Amen. Let's try to get nice. You know you need to be in church. You need to be up under a cover. Don't let the devil fool you, Joy. Don't let the enemy fool you. He do it all the time to me. Oh, Lena, you know you tired. I jump right up like a dead woman. Because I, I, I know I don't need to be listening to you. God got something down the stairs for me. Let me get on down there. Any opportunity that I have to pray, I pray. 3 30, I'm up. I had to take my son to work. I, I don't go back to bed. I love him just that much, Mother Alice. Because I value the relationship that I have with him. And I be up all day. That's right. I be up all day. Because let me tell you something. When you put these jars before God, oh. you're in trouble. That becomes your God. I just read it to you. Okay. I don't you. That becomes your God. That's right. So you forgetting about the one that gives you life. You forgetting about the one that sustains you and keeps you. Mm, fine, fine. You forget the one to the one that we look to the hill where our help coming from. Come on, we forget all about that. We get so caught up with the money. That's what the enemy wants us to do. Jesus. He don't mind waiting. He don't mind waiting. He'll play the wait game with you forever. To get what he wants. Jesus said it very simple. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, to have it more abundantly. So we got to understand the scripture. I'm going to break the script, these scriptures down where you can understand it. And when you get the knowledge, and, and I pray that you be enlightened. I pray that God will it really enlighten this word. When you grab a hold to it, you can apply it to your life. And you'll stop being so rebellious. You'll do what God called you to do. Because in Saul's life, and in, as well as in, um, in Samson's life, yeah. they could have had it all. They could have had, yes, had it all, but they lost it all. Mm -hmm. Running behind a woman, running behind a man, they ain't worth it. Let them go. Some, I don't know who Sonny said, looks like another love she gave. Let them go. Let them go. They look better going because they got diamonds coming down their bank than they did when they came in. And a lot of times we would have saved, like I said, we would have saved a lot of heartache and pain if we would have just listened to mama and dad. Or we would have listened to the, to the word of God. It ain't no different than you tell your children. I tell your son, son, go back there and clean your room. Why haven't you done your room, son? You have to constantly repeat that thing to your son. That's disobedient. That's defiant. I'll do what I want to do. That's why we do not. I'm talking about the one that loves us. We break his heart. Don't think the man that we don't break his heart when we don't do what he's because we do. He's a God that move and breathe and have his being. Yeah. Just like he will break my heart, it will break his heart. You know how we in a relationship and he walk away from me and go on with another woman? Some people have it very hard to recover because they can't see him together because they'll flip out. Mm -hmm. same, same thing with the Lord. You just got to see it in the spiritual sense. In the spiritual sense. So we're going to look at these two, these two verses, y'all. And like I said, God said, I'd rather for you to obey me. Obey my voice. But a lot of times, these spirits, these, you know, I don't care if you're a Christian. The devil talked to them too. The devil talked to us. You just got to be able to stand against him. He said, resist the devil and he'll flee. And he do talk. And let me share something with you. Even the best of us, y'all, don't ever forget this, even the best of us. Those that, that, like Juanita Bryan, she did something. She was saying that uh, she went to do a women conference. And her heart and everything was good intention. But if God did not send her there, she had no business to be there. Right. So she had to repent. And this way, and if you get her book, it's the matters of the heart. It's an old book, but it's full. Of, it, it has a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge in it. So it's important that we know where to go. 
Every ride don't belong to us. Every church service don't belong to you. Because see, when you come in these church services, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is a nugget. When you go into some of these church services, you're not giving out the word. You're receiving the word. So it may not be good for you to go. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it's good that you let your pastor, we all grown, because we hear it, I know it, we hear it, oh, I'm grown just like he's grown. He don't tell me what to do, I put on my pants just like you do. But the problem is you put them on wrong. There's an order in the heavens and there's an order in this earth prayer. Your pastor needs to know where you are. Why? Because he's the seer. That's right. He's the seer. You're up under that cover, he has to give an account for you. So you can't walk in your rebellions against the pastor. Really, as Elder Dollar said this morning, what did Peter say? You ain't lied to me, you lied to the Holy Ghost. Oh. God gonna bring the undertakers into the church. Because people are gonna start dropping dead for lying. I'm up in the head. Because we take the things of God, these holy things of God, we take it as a, a cliche, you know, well, I might, I, I might. I don't know. I don't have no. I don't have no. Uh, uh, I don't have no reverence for this all. I, I. I. don't have a. Better take holy communion. If I know I'm shaking, my daughter read that shit. I just set myself down. I sat. I sat on mess with that holy stuff right there. I stay away from that because I honor that. And too many of people are coming in the house of God playing games. We said it this morning. God sees it all. Pastor might not get it all. But one thing about it, God knew how to re pull back the covers on it. And if there's anything I had to tell you today, stay in the light. Y'all remember that movie, Portuguese? Guys? In the light. Come in the light. <laughs> <laughs> Preach right, right, right. I can see you in the light. But stay in the light. It's okay for God to break you and mold you and shape you. It's all right for him to do that. It's nothing wrong with being broken. There's nothing wrong with being broken. But I'd rather for God to break me than to be rejected and be separated from Almighty God. Amen. I want to walk in the order of God. I want to walk. It might not feel good, but I know it's going to work out for my good. Amen. We got to stay in the light. We got to stay in the light. We got to stay in the light. And the reason why Samuel was telling Saul, Saul did some awful things, y'all. He did some awful things. I was reading on some of it. And now, uh, I saw he ordered the death of his own son. If you uh, in Samuel, 1 Samuel, uh, you can look at that in chapter 14. Then he spared when God told him, uh, Saul, I want to tell Samuel to tell Saul, I want you to kill out the Amalekites. I don't want nothing. I want to kill the children, the males. I want to kill the sheep, everything they own. Because I have had also king of all God. I want to kill them all because I forgot what he did to the Israelites when they were coming through. Mm. God knows how to take care of your enemies. You keep your hands off of them. You keep praying for your enemies. Yes, that's right. You keep praying. Let God be God. Let God deal with that. That's right. I keep my mouth off. It don't matter if you talk about me. It's okay. I'm going to do what's right by you. Because when he says vengeance is his, vengeance is his. Right. The Bible tells me that it's a bad thing to be up in the hands of an angry God. Mm -hmm. So I want to do what's right. I want to do what's right. So don't worry about your enemies. Don't worry about your enemies. But also he attempted to kill. You know he attempted to kill David. God put an evil spirit on him. He cursed and tried to attempt to... Um, uh, he wants again to kill his own son again. That's scene 20. And you can just read how he slaughtered 85 priests of God at night. So Saul did this. It ain't just one little thing that he did. He kept sinning. And a lot of these um, kings, they kept, um, God would bless them and they would be mighty kings and mighty in battle, but they forget the big head, that spirit of pride rise up in them. And they just, and they always, God had to always bring them down. He had to always bring them up. If not, take them up out of there. That's right. That's right. So we have to be careful with that spirit of pride. We have to be careful. But anyway, like I said about the, the two scriptures that I want to talk about, I just really wanted to share that with you because I felt that it, it was needed to be said. That, you know, the things that we go through, stop saying that everything, or oh, I'm going through the church, I don't know why I'm going. You know why you're going. Don't say you don't know why you're going. You know what's in your life. You know the sin that's in your life. 
You don't need a prophet to come tell you about yourself. You know yourself. You know when you're dirty. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that song, Riding Dirty? <gasps> but for the ones up in my age, there was a song called Riding Dirty. You know you ride dirty. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> but you riding dirty. But God, he's the only one can clean. There's nothing wrong with being it's nothing wrong. Black pastor said a word that's so powerful that I can't get it out of my, out of my spirit. That thing is invaded in my spirit. It's nothing wrong with having a cut in a way. They did that. When a male child get born, they cut the foreskin, they cut it away. The same thing in the spirit realm. There's nothing wrong with being cut away. Let God cut that mess out of you. So you can serve him and love him. No, we don't dot our eyes and, and cross all the T's. We're not perfect, but he still loves us. Yeah. But it's the only thing I do believe, Elder Dolly, that really makes it angry is when we, knowing how powerful he is, especially those that have really tasted the powers of ages, and you be led by the devil. Mm -hmm. You better turn a deaf ear to God and let somebody else put something else in your ear and you go that way. Lord have mercy. But anyway, hallelujah. Is that all right, y'all? Amen. Rebellion is something else. It is. It's, it's totally, it's totally disrespectful. It's resisting what God said. I'm gonna do it my way. You grown, yes, we all are grown. And we put on our clothes one leg at a time. But in the spiritual realm, God don't see it like that. And we need to do it. God's not pleased with it. You know you're running late. I called Elder Dolly this morning. I got respect for the woman of God. See, a lot of times, can I share this and then we're going to get on? I'm about finished. I'm just getting the word a little bit. See, let me tell you something. Being a pastor wife, you know, we get that attitude. Can I be real? Mm -hmm. You know, we get that attitude. You know, I, I thought, dang, you under me. I don't care what your position is in here. I'm the pastor wife. Oh. And I'm going to help them run this right here. So everything else is going to back up. <coughs> Wrong attitude. Wrong attitude. Wrong attitude. <laughs> God will remove you up out of here if you don't get that out too right. Because these are God's sheep. This is God's house. God put the order in here. That's right. And that's why you see a lot of ministries tore up. Because why? Different members, you know, leaders, they're walking in disobedience. Right. God says, submit to the woman of God. You submit. And that's what I do. I submit. Because one, I don't want to be cut off. I love that such a reason. I know that's right. It's things I want to see. So I'm going to line up with the order of God. And that's how a lot of them is. Y'all know that's, well, for those who, but that is how, that's how I was thinking now when I first came. <laughs> I was be around the older women. I thank God for them. I do. I thank them for because you learn from them. You do, you learn from it. Yes, yes, yes. It's a learning process. None of us perfect. None Amen. of us perfect. Yes. Amen. So I'm going to walk right. So he said, and Saul said, had the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obedient to the voice of the Lord. Obey the Lord, y'all. Obey. Obey what he called you to do. Like I told you. You, you know what the, what keeps you is the word. It's the word that you have spoken over your life. I don't care whether you can't see it now, but I promise you you'll be able to see it if you just stay up under the covenant of God. And he said, Behold, obedience is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of the ram. As far as rebellious is as sin. I asked a question. I said, Holy Ghost, why did he compare rebellion as the sin of witchcraft. I said, that's demon in damnation. You know what he said? He said, well, rebellion is like the trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, damnation, witchcraft, that's evil. That's some conjuring up stuff. That comes from where? The devil don't come from God. So it's just the same. It's just the same. <laughs> when you walk like that, you <clears throat> when God has told you to do something and you walk away from it, it's just like witchcraft. It's just like witchcraft. And a lot of times, then I share something with you, a lot of times you think people work in witchcraft, but well, you don't done it yourself. The word just don't make it, aren't you? 
They come back peekaboo. I, I come to get what you just said. You know how you say, well, I got a headache. Oh, I don't feel good. I stopped saying all that stuff. I was in physical therapy and the woman said, oh, I feel like my arm broke. That wife, she quit that thing. She's like, ah, 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 ah. I meant my arm just bothered me a little bit. Words, your words have power. You better mind what you speak over your children. That word comes back. It'll torment those children for the rest of their lives. So it's important that we make sure that we speak only what this word says. Even when I don't feel, I may feel some aches and pain in my body, but I get up every morning. I say, God, I thank you for new grace, new mercy. I thank you for healing this body. Yeah. I might not be able to see it right now. I feel it right now because got some pain going on. But I thank you for healing this body. Yeah. I got to decree and declare these things over my life. According to the word of God, above all things, he said, I want you to prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prosper. Am I right about that? Amen. So you got to learn to agree and decree and declare some things. So that's my thing is, so I'm going to walk in obedience. We're going to walk in obedience. We're going to hear to the voice of God. Then he says, stubbornness is as iniquity and adultery. So I look at it and say, well, what about that? And he said, well, stubbornness is is refusing correction and repentance. You know you're not in right standing with God and you, that you need to repent for that thing. You know you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You need to repent. It's crazy. It's like a man having an arrogance and to walk out that door and you know you ain't in right standing with God. At least give your father something to work with. He already know you ain't perfect. That's why Jesus came. Amen. So it's no excuse for us to continue to walk like that. Iniquity is but sin and wickedness. That's all it is. Just sin and puke down dirty, filthy and wickedness. That's all it is. That's all it is. And now Dutch is just choosing to give your service and your obedience to another God. Amen. That's all it is. Whether it's your job, your house, your car, I see them all the time. Y'all see them. They have, before they come to church, they want to sit out there and wash their cars. Because I worship my car. You know, I got the BMW, I got my Lamborghini, and I got to wash them, they got some dirt. So I got to, I'm cleaning y'all, I'm cleaning. So I got to wash, but that's, that's what it is. You don't put anything between you and Almighty God. Yeah. You don't do that. Amen. He said, I'm a jealous God. And I understand why he says that. All that I've done for you. Look how he created this world. Amen. It's an expression of his love to us. All, right now. All that I do for you. Even when you don't even deserve it. Even when the enemy wants to take you out, I tell him, no, you can't do that. That's right. That's That's right. right. You can't step over your boundaries. Devil, back up. Amen. Amen. Your son, your daughter should have been in jail. Should have been in the grave for what they've done with their wickedness. But God, no. even us, even myself, I could, I should have been wiped out a long time ago with my wicked and deep butt cut. It wasn't a choice for me to preach the gospel. I had a charge to keep. He spoke something over my life that's manifesting in this earth way. So when I look over my life, that's why I could do my t say my testimony. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, yes. where would I have been? Mm -hmm. Where would I have been? And it's a sad thing, the last statement. God to withdraw himself from you. It's a bad thing. Because there's nobody, no place, or no person is worth you. It's worth losing your soul. Amen. No man is worth it. Amen. Ain't no man worth the, me losing my anointing, my blessing, and even my life. One night of pleasure. Like I told you last time, I put five minutes. No more than five ten. It ain't worth it. Amen. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Make it right. Make the tree right. Cut it down if it ain't no good. But if it's right, make it right. Make it right. Because you should want to please the Father. You should want to please the Father. 
It should want to please the Father. James 4 and 17 said that, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and do it not to him <coughs> it is sin. You know you don't been up under everybody, you don't been up under enough word to know to do it right. Anybody that know Bishop Henderson, that man is a preaching fireball. He really is. Amen. He be bumping and jumping all over these pews in him. And then be tired and wore out when he get home. Amen. Amen. But to do right, you gotta wanna do right. Do right gotta be part of who you are. It might not feel right. I might not want to do it, but I want to, because of God, I got, I got to do right. I'm bought with a price. When you get that in your head, you're bought with a price. And you're no longer your own. Then you're ready to do right. Matthew 7, 7 and 21 said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. That should be part of your prayer. Not my will, Lord, but thy will. Amen. Because Jesus told the disciples, remember when they asked him, well, how should we pray? He said, well, our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, God, let thy will be done. Let God's will be done for your life. He already spoke over your life. Right. He already spoke, and he was, the reason why we're here is because he's watching the word. That he spoke over our lives. That he spoke over our lives. And as they said this morning, you know, that our feet, he said, I was looking at it in Psalms 37 and uh, 23. He said, the Lord, some, some translations say direct or, and some say establish, but the Lord directs the steps, not one step, but steps of the godly. And he delights in every detail of their life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Pastor's teaching on this. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Yes. You get out of the way and let God be God in your life. You don't have to lose everything. You don't have to, you don't have to please nobody but God. And a lot of times we're trying to please too many people. That's why we're walking in so much disobedience. We're not, we're walking in rebellion against God. Amen. Because I'm trying to please this one. I'm trying to please this one. I'm trying to keep this one. I'm trying to be friends with this one in the world. And so I'm, I'm being led away from God. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Even a dog, if, if you keep kicking and mistreating a bitch, then he gonna leave. Amen. Come on. So come on here. How long do you think God going to be there? Jesus. Amen? Amen. Even, I mean, you know, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. I, I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. <laughs> but I love you. I just told you the truth. I hope the truth sets you free. Amen. Rebellion is against God is some serious business. Amen. That's that means I'm willing to do what I want to do. Or be with whoever I want to be than to listen to what you have to say, God. That's what we say when we when we walk away. Mm -hmm. I, when I turn a deaf ear to what he's saying, that means I don't want to hear nothing you got to say because it ain't lining up with what I want. And then we want to hang with people that's going to tell me the same stuff. You don't want to call nobody in the church. You don't want to call pastor. You don't want to call nobody that's going to tell you the truth. I want to call somebody in the world, and that's a bad thing, that the saints in the church, the other dollar, they're going to call the, the world for advice. Oh, Jesus. And they do it all the time. Do it all the time. Oh, in well, the church, I, I, I can't trust them in the church. And you can trust those ones, them trust ones out there in the world? Mm -hmm. Saying what they want to hear. Because they say what they want to hear. That's right. They don't want the truth. They want to hear what they want to hear. They want to hear what they want to hear. But I thank God for the word. I do, because this, this is a good word. I found myself, even I, I rebelled against God. I had to get it right in my own self. See, a lot of things may seem right to me. God said there's a way that seemed right to a man. I, I, you know, but when God really go down inside, you will realize just how nasty you are. And you want to keep everything clean. You want your heart, and you want him to cut away. 
Because if I don't sanctify my, if I don't sanctify, pray and fast, when I come up here, it, it ain't gonna, the prayer ain't going to go no way, no way. Because my heart ain't right. My heart has to be right for every individual in here in order for a prayer to get through. Amen? Amen. So our hearts, we need to line up with the word of God. Father God, we just thank you. We give you the praise, glory, God. Father God, I pray that all that you have given me was said, Father God. In the name of Jesus, God, I ask you to let this word follow them, Father God. Let them evaluate their lives. God. Let them look, look in this perfect uh, Holy Ghost mirror, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God, that you will cut away these things in their lives, God. That you will tear down even these strongholds in their lives, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Father God, I remind you, Lord, you said who you, the Son has set free is free indeed, Lord God. Give them knowledge, wisdom, and revelation, God, of your word and of you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, and we thank you, Lord, God, and we give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let me share this with you before I sit down. I went to school to pick my son up Wednesday, and I don't know what went down at Aiken High, but I was sitting in the car and I was praying every morning. I get up and I pray and I pray and I pray very hard and honestly for our young people. And but when I went there that afternoon about 1 30 pick signing up, it was this little young boy. When I seen the police, because they have two on campus, and I seen them on the side with the seniors, and whoever that was, I couldn't I didn't know who it was, but I knew they were, you know, I was a black kid, a black child, and so I I said, oh my God, what they don't did now? But then the police, the black cop, he came and we had another one. He was had him had cuffs and I seen the cuffs and I started crying. I said, Lord, you know, I pray honestly, God. I honestly called the school out and I and I learned how to bind and loose. I lose these things that the enemy trying to do against our kids, God, and I bind them and I send them back. I said, but Lord, I, I mean, I remember was talking to God like this, and I was saying, Lord, this hurts me. And it was like a heaviness came over me, and my heart, it felt so, it was so heavy. I said, oh my God, and he let me know that, see how, that's how my heart feel when they do, when things like this happen. I said, well, God, what are we going to do? That's how I talked to my father. I said, well, what are we going to do about our young children, God. We can't let the enemy take our children like this here. And the child, he was sitting right now, just boo-hoo crying, you know, because I hate to see, I see the cuffs, and I know what that cuff represents. It's a bondage in his life. And I say, Lord, well, where is the father? See, that's how you need to talk. Lord, where the father? He let me know. See, the fathers, they're so busy not being fathers. They're not in these young men like the young men. They don't have no example because you got your own men trying to act like they get our thugs. I hear oh. the well, Lord, but what we gonna do about it? And that thing hurt me. Then it come to find out it was another, uh, it was a little guy in the car. See, our young women, they want to be more. The Bible is fulfilling itself, y'all. Don't take it lightly. They, I've never seen so many women want to be like me. I ain't never seen it like in my days. I mean, I'm only 50. I just turned 50, but I, I mean, I've never seen it like this. And the baby was in the car. I call them babies. They were, she was in the car as well. And the young boy, he was about in the ninth grade. They was trying to rob this white guy. And Zion so said, Mama, why are you crying last year? Because it hurts my I felt the heart of God on this thing. And I couldn't stop crying. And I said, well, ain't no need, Lord, for me to pray because my prayers seem like my prayers are not answered. But I'm going to share this with y'all. I, God said, well, let me show you something. He said, don't give up on me. He said, and he reminded me, I want to share this only with the church, uh, Taisha, okay? And, and 